Hello lads and lasses, this is Nick, this is the Goon Squad channel, and today we're going to be looking at some of the best and worst flat pedal riding shoes. Yeah, get a bunch of bikes and ride them around with your friends. Rest of shit. Alright, so what I look for personally in my flat pedal shoes is I look for three major factors, those being grip, durability, and uh, the feel and fit of the shoe. So with grip, we're looking at just having enough traction on the outsole to keep your feet planted on your pedals in the same spot, right? You know, and then uh, traction, just walking around hiking or whatever, that plays a little bit of a part into it as well. For durability, you know, we don't want our shoes breaking down on us super fast because we're gonna beat them up real bad and we need them to take it. For feel and fit, you know, that comes into a lot of factors. You're talking about comfort, both hiking and if you need to make a big mid-air dismount and land on your feet or whatever, you know, you want that cushioning coming in. Also a little bit of like stiffness if pedaling efficiency is what you're into. And then uh, how they fit size-wise, how the materials are, general comfort, that sort of thing. So let me first just get out of the way some of the more common uh, bad trends I see from people riding on the trails where I can just tell immediately that you, uh, you ain't done this a whole lot of times. And that is uh, when you see things like uh, people riding in trainers and any shoe with a foam sole. So this guy here, this is a Nike free run. And I'm gonna tell you, don't ride in your free runs. See, free runs have a foam outsole and foam outsoles just get totally thrashed by the pins on pedals and your shoes are going to get beat up super fast, they're not gonna grip good, and it's just a bad idea. So don't do that. Also, don't be riding in trainers, because they're gonna have the same sort of outcome. Even if they got a rubber outsole, they're just not giving it to you in the ways that you need it for riding a bike. So if you're just getting into riding, and you don't have yourself a pair of dedicated riding shoes yet, don't worry about it too much, but please leave your free runs, leave your running shoes, leave your trainers at home. Get just a pair of skate shoes if you have them. Everybody's gonna have a pair of Vans or Converse or something like that, I'm sure. They're gonna do you a million times better than your trainers or your free runs will, I promise. Now that that little public service announcement is out of the way, we can get into the real meat of the video and talk about some of the good shoes that are a real positive to have on your feet out on the trail, especially when compared to some of the uh, more taboo options, those being these two down here. Uh, and we're gonna start off with uh, with Vans. More specifically, this is the, the Skate High Pro. And these shoes are great. They're going straight into A tier. All right, so with Vans, they're really good shoes overall for riding. The main drawbacks that we see for the most part is like if you're into pedaling efficiency, they're they're not really it. The, the outsoles can be pretty flexy, so you're not getting that really solid energy transfer that you're looking for if you're a big pedal pusher or whatever. It's not really my cup of tea, so it doesn't bother me personally all that much. So maybe that's skewing my answers a little bit. The other main drawbacks is like, the uppers aren't particularly durable. Vans are known for, you know, like, everybody's probably had that pair of Vans that lasts them like a month, even if they're just wearing them casually. And then as well, the the cushion on like the normal Vans just sucks so bad. It's like running on bricks, you know, you're just running on that hard rubber and it's terrible. So if you ever are off your bike, it's, a, it's an absolute nightmare. Where you can remedy some of those issues is with uh, like the Pro models, like the Skate High Pro that we're talking about right now. These things shore up a lot of those weaknesses in dramatic fashion. You get a suede upper with the with the Pro models, so that's a lot more durable than the canvas that you see on most vans typically. And then we also get a new insole that's unique to the Pro models that is super fantastic for riding. The cushioning goes from being god awful dog <laughs> to pretty darn good. And uh, you know the van's outsole is like super grippy actually. It's 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 really pretty fire. And like I was saying earlier, if you've got a pair of vans. You can make do with those. They grip pedals really good. And uh, yeah, even that, that same outsole is what's present on the Skate High, and that, that thing's sick. It's really good. So yeah, A tier. All right, next we're gonna be talking about a shoe that I uh, I really don't like, that being the, the Giro Jacket. So where the Giro Jacket shines is its upper actually is very durable. They're padded, they're comfortable, they have good cushion, all that sort of stuff. And they have really good energy transfer because they have, uh, they're one of the two shoes on this list that actually has a midsole shank which is great for energy transfer, so if you're a pedal pusher, that might be more your thing. But in my experience, they got super hot all the time. The outsole broke down like immediately and the grip wasn't even that great to begin with. It's just really stiff, like kind of flaky rubber. It's just not great. And the outsole's also really like thick. So you get no pedal feel, which is an important thing for me because that outsole is just too stiff, too thick, and it feels like platform shoes. Like you're so high off the ground, it feels like. So for those reasons, they're still better than 
free runs or trainers, but they're they're going in C tier. All right, next we're gonna address uh, Nike SBs a little bit. That's another common one I see, but these ones aren't nearly as bad as these other ones down here that are just actually totally taboo. Uh, Nike SBs, they offer a pretty durable upper and a not so durable outsole for sure. The rubber on these is just too stiff and too almost glossy. It doesn't wear well, it doesn't grip particularly well. They do give really good pedal feel and really good cushioning and they're comfortable. Like they're Nikes, you know, you, you know how Nikes fit. So if that's your cup of tea and you really like pedal feel and you're not that big in a grip, maybe they're for you. For me, it's not nearly enough grip and the pedal feel doesn't make up for the rest of the drawbacks and they go in C tier right next to the jackets. Ooh, so next we're getting into the tried and true, the stalwart champion of the mountain bike industry, the 510 Freerider, and that's going in A tier 100%. So we also want to address that uh, 510 does make two different outsoles. They make their stealth rubber outsole with like the big dots or whatever, and they make the, the smaller dots. So that's a thing. The smaller dots are made out of like, like stiffer rubber. They're a lot better for pedal feel for dirt jumpers. You can get your feet off of them more easily and move around on them and adjust and whatnot more easily than with the normal ones, which are just like super glue. Like it's actually too much grip for me. It's a ton of grip and they're fantastic, don't get me wrong. But like for me personally, it's too much grip. I much prefer the, the stiffer outsoles for sure. But yeah, like these things are super bulletproof. Durability is off the charts, grip is off the charts. However, they fit me like dog shit also. Like these things do not fit me at all. They are really wide as far as shoes goes, in my experience at least. And then the ankle rides up super high on me, which is like really uncomfortable. So that's not great. But I mean, like a million people wear them for a reason. They're the best grip on the market. So if you're just looking for the end all be all of grip on a mountain bike shoe, this is it. This is look no further. All right. So next we have Etnies. More specifically, we're talking about the Marana Michelin. And I'm just going to go ahead and do this because this is, in my opinion, the best flat pedal shoe on the market all around. I think anybody can get in this shoe and love it whether you're a pedal pusher or a dirt jumper or whatever whatever's important to you i think this shoe has it in spades it's that good so you see etnies makes two different outsoles they make their more standard outsole that you see on most shoes and then they have their michelin outsole where you see on this shoe the marana and then the jocelyn and that michelin sole is beast it grips super good it's still plenty easy to move your feet around it, it's it's crazy it's like the grip like turns off when you want it to but it's just stuck like super glue when you need to be stuck the sole strikes a brilliant balance between like energy efficiency, like it's stiff enough to give you that good energy transfer. The upper is super durable, you get quality materials, you know, like suede, stuff like that. They fit great, tons of padding on the inside, the cushioning's great, good pedal feel. For me, personally, these things really do offer everything. All right, so next we're gonna get into a really hyped up one, that being a Afton brand. More specifically, we have the Afton Keegan, as that is their flat pedal shoe. We're gonna slot these in a B tier here. So they're not for me. I'm gonna come right out and say it. I I don't like pedaling. I don't pedal up hills. I ride dirt jumps. So a lot of the boxes that this one is ticking just aren't very important to me. That's not why I'm putting it in a B tier. I'm putting it in a B tier because it's a worse shoe overall than the 510 Freerider and the Van Skate High Pro. But it does definitely have some upsides and it is better than these shoes down here in C tier. So uh, you get a lot of really good energy transfer. That's all good. It's like I was talking about with the jackets. This is the other shoe that has a shank in it. And uh, yeah, if that's your cup of tea, these would probably be my my go-to for just like outright energy transfer. They're great for that. Uh, the upper's okay. It's like this really weird, like synthetic-y rubbery stuff. It's, pr it's proven pretty durable. And then the soles are decent. You get good grip on them for sure. But they do have that kind of like distant from the pedal feel that I was talking about with the gyros. It's, it's not my favorite, but you know, at the end of the day, the grip's good, the traction's average, pedal feels bad, but it makes up for it in energy transfer. So they're, they're middling for me, B tier. All right, and last but not least, we have a, a new one for me that I'm trying out. These are my daily drivers right now, the Lakai's. These are the Lakai uh, Cambridge. So now Lakai, like Etnies and like 510, makes two different outsoles on their shoes. You have um, one outsole, which is really good for riding. And then you have another outsole that is not so good for riding. The Cambridges come with the outsole that's good for riding, obviously. And that outsole grips fantastic. It's a lot like what I was talking about earlier with the Etnies, where it's just kind of this magical pattern, this magical tread pattern combined with some really good rubber that just allows you to move your feet when you need to, but they're also stuck like glue when you don't need to. It's got a really good durable upper, again, made out of some good material suede, like 
all these shoes at the top end here are all suede so that's that's like ideal these are a lot more durable than vans they have way better cushion than they probably are the best cushion on this list actually it's still good like responsive cushion like it feels athletic it doesn't feel like I don't know, like you're sinking into it, like a Tempur-Pedic mattress or anything like that. Like it's good solid cushion. I fell from like, I don't know, 15 feet in the air the other day, overshooting a jump. And then I was wearing a nice shirt and I didn't want to screw up my shirt. So I just landed on my feet in these things against my better judgment, make no mistake. But I was chilling, no ankle braces, no nothing. I was chilling, which is crazy to me because I have notoriously terrible ankles. So that was really surprising to me. They fit true to size, they fit good, good comfort throughout. It's a solid shoe. I'm gonna slot it right into A tier. So at the end of the day, the Etnies Marana Michelin is my number one overall pick. They're the best all-rounder for sure. They give you an unprecedented amount of balance between like good energy transfer, good pedal feel, comfort, cushion, grip, all that stuff. They're great. They're definitely my top all-rounder, my number one recommendation to anybody looking to get a mountain bike shoe. The best gripping shoe on this list is without a doubt the 510 Freerider and that s stealth rubber outsole or whatever the hell they call it. It's it's heat. Like it's too much grip for some people. It is it is literally there's Gorilla Glue on the bottom of your shoe at all times. It's nuts. Next, my go-to shoe if you're into pedaling, you know, if you if you actually climb hills and flat pedals and stuff and you're in the enduro or trail riding or whatever they're calling it these days, e-bikes, I don't know. If you're if you're into pedaling, the Afton is going to be the shoe for you. It's the best all-around shoe that still has a shank in it, so you get that really good energy transfer. And then finally, if you're doing stunts, if you're one of my dirt jumpers, my street slayers, my pump trackers, my slope style riders, the Lakai is going to be the way to go. This shoe absolutely rips for anything related to doing stunts and stuff like that. It's just got the best, like, balance of grip and maneuverability on the outsole it's got the best combination of cushion and pedal feel it's durable it's gonna be the ideal shoe for anybody doing that sort of riding all right and that's gonna wrap it up guys thanks for sticking with me this whole time if you want to make your own tier list the link to this one is going to be available down in the description so if you disagree with any of my options if you think i'm an idiot go switch them around post the link i'd love to see it also, if there's any shoes that I miss that you'd like to hear some more about, feel free to drop me a comment. I'll read it. And then also check out our merch store. We just opened that up. That's pretty sick. You want to get your hands on some dope swag, get after it. Links to our social media will be, will be in the description. Don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe, like the video, all that garbage. You know, kiss your mom, all that good stuff. Take it easy, folks.